Hello and welcome to another edition of By the Numbers, where we take a deep dive into market affordability. We'll show you real properties and give you real solutions. Today, we are going to look at 6694 Outback Road, Cocoa, Florida, 32926, listing price at $450,000. This property was found on Zillow and it's listed. The, the listing is provided by Stephen Thomas of Blue Marlin Real Estate. You can see the hyperlink below the picture and you will also be able to find that actual working hyperlink in the description. All right, so let's go into what we're gonna do. So we take a deep dive and look at the numbers and show you how we can make this market affordable. So we'll look at full asking price and then asking for a price reduction and then looking at getting seller concessions. So we're going to do three different types of options here and break it down by which one is actually the best option for you, uh, in my opinion. So let's jump right into this one. All right, so full asking price. We used 740's credit score. Uh, First time home buyer, 3% down for the conventional, 3.5% down for FHA and zero down for VA. We're gonna be looking at only fixed rate mortgages. And here we go. So for a conventional loan with 3% down, you're looking at a loan amount for $336,500. 30 year fixed rate mortgage came in when I ran these numbers at 6.5%, putting $13,500 down. With putting less than 20% down, you are required to pay mortgage insurance, and that came in at $316. Moving on to the FHA, your loan amount would be $434,250. 30-year fixed rate mortgage again came in at 5.75% when I ran these numbers with a down payment of $15,750. The mortgage insurance on this one came in at $199. And then finally, your VA loan, $450,000 loan amount, 30-year fixed rate mortgage came in at 6.125%, 0% and $0 down, and they do not require mortgage insurance. All right. So what does all this mean? So when you look at your full asking price monthly payment, we're going to break it down. There's four parts typically to your payment. So we have your principal, your interest, your taxes, and your insurance. So those are known as your PITA, your P-I-T-I. And then if you put less than 20% down, you'll want to add in mortgage insurance, all right? Otherwise known as PMI. So let's look at the breakdown of what a full asking price monthly payment would look like. For your conventional loan, you would pay $618 towards your principal, $2141 towards your interest, $447 towards your homeowner's insurance, HOA, and PMI, and then $323 for taxes, giving you a grand total of $3529 per month. Your FHA loan came in at $674 going towards your principal, $1860 towards interest, 330 for the HOA, PMI, and homeowner's insurance. And this is just an estimate, just FYI. And then 323 for taxes. So giving you a grand total of $3,187 for your monthly payment using the FHA loan. And then rounding out the, with the VA, $667 going towards your principal, $2,067 going towards interest, $131 for your homeowner's insurance and more and uh, HOA, there's no PMI, so 131, and then taxes at 323, giving you a grand total of 3188. All right. So let's see what it, your payment would look like if you asked for a $20,000 price reduction. So original list price was $450,000. We're gonna come in at $430,000. And with that purchase price, your 3% down loan amount will be $417,100. Again, 30 year fixed rate mortgage came in at 6.5% when I ran these numbers. And your down payment on this would be $12,900. And the mortgage insurance would come in at $302. Moving on to your FHA, again, with that reduction to $430 
uh, purchase price, your loan amount, $414,950, 30-year fixed rate mortgage came in at 5.75% again when I ran the numbers, and the mortgage insurance was 190 Your down payment for this FHA loan with uh, purchase price of $430,000 was $15,050. And then looking at your VA loan, $430,000 purchase price, 30 year fixed rate came in at 6.125%, zero for down payment and zero for mortgage insurance. So let's look at what that did to the payment. All right, so your conventional, again, same principle, uh, PETA, your $590 towards your principal, $2,046 towards interest, $427 for your combination of homeowner's insurance, PMI, and homeowner and uh, HOA, $427. Taxes, $308, giving you a grand total of $3,371 for your conventional loan. Moving on to the FHA, $644 towards principal, $1,777 for interest, $315 for your combo, 308 for taxes, giving you a grand total of $3,045. And then lastly, your VA loan at 638 going towards principal, 1975 going towards interest, 125 going towards your homeowner's insurance and uh, HOA, and then 308 going towards taxes, giving you a grand total of $3,046 for your monthly payment using a price reduction. All right, so our last option is asking for seller concessions versus a price reduction. And this is what we commonly refer to as a seller fund and buy down when you use concessions to buy down your rate. So using the, that as a guide, we are going to look at the original purchase price of $450,000. And same principal, 740 credit score and a fixed rate mortgage. So purchase price, $450,000, 3% down for first time home buyer using a conventional loan. Your loan amount came in at $436,500. Again, 30 year fixed rate mortgage. This time it came in at 5.5%, giving you a down payment amount of $13,500 and the mortgage insurance at $316. We bought $10,367 worth of points coming in, bringing that to 2.375. Now looking at your FHA, $334,250 for your purchase, for your loan amount, 30 year fixed rate mortgage came in at 5%, paying $9,245 for points, which equal 2.129%, $15,750 your down payment, and then $199 again for your mortgage insurance. And then finally, your VA 450 purchase price, 30 year fixed rate mortgage came in at 5%, paying $9,779 in points, which were 2.173%. Again, zero down payment required and then no mortgage insurance. So let's see what that did to the payment. All right, so your monthly payment for using seller concessions to buy down your rate. Again, same principles, your PITA, P-I-T-I, 698 going towards your principal, 1780 going towards interest, 447 for your combo HOA, PMI, homeowner's insurance, and then 323 for taxes, giving you a grand total of 3248 using a conventional loan as your monthly payment. Moving on to your FHA, 737 going towards principal, 1594 going towards interest, 330 for your combo, and 323 for taxes, giving you a grand total of 2984 as a monthly payment. And then finally, your VA, 764 going towards principal, 1652 going towards interest, 131 going towards your homeowner's insurance, HOA, and then 323 for taxes, giving you a grand total of 2870 as a monthly payment using a VA loan, buying down the rate. So that's a lot of numbers that I just gave you. So let's take a look at what it all looks like together. All right, so your conventional, there'd be no savings if you went with full asking and no concessions. Your monthly payment would have came in at 3529. 
with a $20,000 reduction in price, we're gonna take that original asking price payment of $35.29. We're gonna subtract your new payment with that reduction of $33.71. And it's gonna show you that with a $20,000 price reduction, you would save $158 a month versus paying full price. Now, asking for seller concessions versus a price reduction, we're gonna use the same full asking price monthly payment $35.29, and we're just going to subtract your new payment using a reduced interest rate, a seller-funded buy-down of $32.48, and you can see that you are going to save $281 a month. You asking for seller-funded buy-down, asking for the seller to buy down your rate versus asking for a price reduction. So you can see that this particular strategy gives you a lot more savings, even though the amount and which you asked for in concessions was all less than that $20,000. So let's move on to your FHA. Now looking at this full asking price, no savings gives you a monthly payment of $3,178. Now that $20,000 reduction, we're gonna still use that $3,178. We're gonna subtract the new mortgage of $3,045, giving you a a grand savings of $133 a month if you were to ask for $20,000 price reduction. And then if we use seller concessions to buy down your interest rate, we're going to take that $3,178 and we're going to subtract the new loan amount of $29.84. And you can see grand savings of $194 a month asking for your interest rate to be buy, bought down versus that price reduction. So. You see in a common theme here that buying down your interest rate is a is looking like it is the grant saves you the most. This one is looking like, and let's just find out what it looks like on a VA loan. All right, so thirty one eighty eight full asking price, no savings. That twenty k reduction, we're going to take that thirty one eighty eight, subtract your. Um, mortgage, if you were to get $20,000 reduction, which would have been $3046, you'd save $142 a month asking for that reduction. And then seller concessions, we're going to use that original asking price payment, $3188. We're going to subtract it if you bought down the rate. Your mortgage would be $2870. And the savings here are phenomenal at $318 a month. In conclusion, seller concessions seems to be the winner here. When you go back and you look at the amount of savings you get over the course of your loan, asking for the seller to pay down your interest rate versus a reduction in price is a win-win, not only for this, for you, the buyer, but also for the seller. Reason being is the amount of the buy down was less than any concession or any uh, reduction. So yeah, seller concessions. So in a buyer's market, let it work for you. Understand that the market has shifted and it's no longer a seller's market in most areas. It is a buyer's market. So sellers are willing to make it, some concessions and you can see the winner of the savings would be asking for concessions versus a rate reduction or versus a price reduction. So I hope that helps with your journey. I'm going to also give you a little breakdown here. We're going to get a little extra right now. And I'm going to show you based on this particular property and the area in which it's in, what you can expect now instead of when you look into buy now versus waiting. So. In this particular area in Coco, the medium home price is $350,838, so or $191 a square foot. The anticipated appreciation in five years is going to be 18%. And you can see that it equates to $63,000 in uh, equity gained. That's a lot of uh, gain for, uh, for you. I want you to also take a look over at the inventory levels. The homes for sale, now this is, there's four homes for sale per 1,000 people, okay? Now, 
that's not a lot of inventory. When you think about how many people are able to buy, if you look right here, 40,000 people, renters can afford to purchase right now. So 40,000 and you have four homes per thousand, there's, there's a shortage there. And our biggest, biggest demographic of people that are buying are the millennials and Gen Z, the age bracket of 27 to 35. There's 70,000 of them ready to buy. I mean, look at this household formation, 67, 25, and then the thousands. So first time home, home buyers, there's a lot to take in here. So if you're on that fence, just realize that there's still an inventory shortage. Our levels are nowhere near where they were back in 2008, 2009, all the way to 2011. So um, just food for thought when you think about the value being there or if home prices are gonna come back down. So just let this resonate with you. Let's also look at the unemployment rate in, in the area. So in, at 20, in 2022, the rate, the unemployment rate was at 3.62%, which is really low. And the household median income was $57,128, which is above the national average of 55698 When you take all this into consideration, this is a booming market in that particular area. Inventory is low. So use what is considered a, a buyer's market to your advantage and you get those seller concessions and will definitely help you make it more affordable in this market. I also gave a little bit of demographics for the area shows a breakdown. Um, again, very similar to what you saw over there. First time home bars at 70. 0.79, that demographic. You can see the population is split evenly with men and women 50-50, which is good. Uh, let's take a look at elementary, middle, high school, college. The student-teacher ratio, 15 to 1, gives you a little idea of... And then below, you can see the buildings by decade. So in the 50s, 17,000. 60s, 38,000, 70s, 36,000, and then so on and so forth. So you can see that reduction from the 80s to now, how they're not building as many. So inventory levels will remain tight for the foreseeable future. And then this last little one is to give you a little idea of this particular area, just a breakdown of um, violent crime, property crime, stuff like that, things that are reported and our um, public knowledge, so our public record. So that does it. That will conclude today's. If you have any questions about this particular property, drop me a comment. All my information is in the description. You can send me a text, an email. Uh, you can call me, whatever you would like. I can give you your own personal breakdown of what the numbers would look like with your personal scenario or any for any property. So just give me a call. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Take care. And for all of you agents and loan officers out there, check out our agent growth classes. We have classes such as ChatGPT and AI for your real estate business, Instagram reels, hooks and scripts, embracing the shift, all these to help you grow in 2023 and beyond. If you're not interested in any of those courses, check out this section. This is our education courses. We have things such as seller funded buy downs, how to use gift funds to sell more properties, credit issues, facts versus fiction, and then things like simplifying condo financing. If any of these ring a bell, go ahead and scan that QR code to the left side of your screen and set something up.